Hey guys, welcome back to JD Mods. Today I'm going to take you on a tour of my parents' 2005 Toyota Hiace that has been converted to a camper van. So this particular Hiace is the Regis Ace Commuter. In Japan, this was a 14 person passenger van, um, but everything has been stripped out of it to turn it into a camper van. So this van is technically mid-engine. It has the 2TR FE, it's a 2.7 liter inline four that was also offered in the Tacoma of the same era. Um, and we're gonna show you where the engine is. So to get to the motor, you actually go underneath the passenger seat. Um, the only van that I know of that was sold in North America by Toyota that had this engine set up was the Previa. Had quite a few of those growing up. Awesome van. Um, but this has the same engine placement. So that's how you access the engine. Like I mentioned, it is the 2TR FE 2.7 liter inline four. Um, you'd think that a van this size, it would be a little bit too small of a motor, but apparently driving it, it's really not that bad. It seems like it's a good match. So I'm just gonna drive it forward so we can do a full walk around. So awkward to get into. <laughs> So to give you a bit of backstory on this van, my parents have always dreamed of building a camper van, but all of the North American and German platforms tend to have their fair share of problems and aren't particularly reliable. And because they planned on trekking to some really remote places in Canada, they wanted something that was going to get them there reliably. So they ended up picking this up from Velocity Cars in Vancouver um, about a year and a half ago, I believe. I can't remember what they paid for it, but it was a pretty good deal because it was low kilometers and of course coming from Japan. Um, completely rust free. The thing is in absolutely mint condition. So they bought this van sight unseen and had it shipped here from Vancouver. Um, at the time the van had been used in Japan as kind of a crude camper already. It had been stripped out. There was like a double layered cot in it, a fridge, um, they left one little bank of seats in it, um, and just a couple other like camping items. But they wanted to do a full conversion. So without further ado, I will show you inside of the van. Okay, so over here we have just countertop space for like prepping food and such with these little latching doors. Um, these fold down at night for dog beds to go on them because they do travel with their two poodles. So I'll show you the other one as well. Just like that. So the dog beds go on top so they're not hogging the human bed. Um, over here we have a little sink. Um, what else? Oh, the fridge. This actually is the fridge that came in it, um, but they're using still. They have a power bank over here. They have a very complicated battery system um, that I don't really know the details of, so I won't try and speak on that. Um, they have a porta potty, a whole bunch more storage. Again, just tons and tons of storage. It's a very storage dense van, which you kind of have to when you're living in a van for extended periods of time. Um, and I'll open the back door so you can easily see the bed. So this thing has an absolutely monstrous tailgate. You kind of have to get it out of the way of once it starts going. <laughs> oh, sleeping bag. So they put these screens on the back so that at night you can open it up and enjoy the fresh air. And then you can tack them back with a magnet and there's these huge slides that come out that hold all sorts of things for camping. Don't know how that works. There it goes. Latch on it. Lots and lots of storage. Again, kind of necessary when you're living in a van for a month at a time. They also have a ladder um, to get onto the roof of it, and I'm going to show you some of those features now. So the van has some pretty cool features on top of it. Just like my Blit, they have a rhino rack on top. Rhino rack is made in Australia. Um, and it can be hard to get racks for Japanese cars, but a dealer of Rhino racks in Huntsville actually helped them source it and brought it in from Australia for them. Um, and the idea with the racks is if they're gone for an extended period of time, they can have solar panels up there. They have a, just like a power fist, like princess auto basket up there um, for extra gas if they're in like remote areas. And then this Rhino rack, Sunseeker sunshade, I'll see if I can find a photo of them using it on their trip. It's really cool, gigantic sunshade. That makes it so they can cook outside, even in inclement weather. So Kyle went up and got some higher ground so you could see the ventilation. They also have um, just like a maxi fan up there, the kind of standard fan that you'd find on an RV. 
Um, the one thing I did want to mention, and the reason that the Sunseeker shade is so important, is with this van, in order to get insurance on it, you are not allowed to cook inside. That is why there's no fixed cooking surface inside. It's not a huge van, so I don't think you'd really want to cook in it anyways. Um, but part of the stipulation of making the camper van to get insurance, you have to cook outside. So all of their appliances are like butane stoves, um, and they have like a little butane oven. So yeah, all the cooking is done outside. So I'll just show you a couple of features of the interior. It is the base bucket van. Um, and they didn't know this getting it, but it is kind of a bad interior. If you're looking to get a high SS camper van, I definitely recommend stepping up. The seats are pretty excruciating. They're extremely flat, just like foam seats. So they have these like Obis form pads to sit on to make it a little bit more comfortable. Um, however, it does have this neat little like jump seat in the middle. Lots of interesting like storage and stuff you can use. And it also becomes a seat. Not a ton of storage in here. Just I'll see if I can turn a light on. Oh, that didn't really help much, did it? No. Um, there's like some room down here for like maps and such. Pretty large glove, glove box, aftermarket stereo, but because this is the base bucket model, it's all kind of cheap. Oh, there's storage there too. Um, it's all kind of just cheap. And of course, no cruise control for really long trips is not great. Um, I know they're gonna be looking into putting cruise control in it. They just got back from a stint up to the Northwest Territories and it was a very long drive to not have cruise control. So I think if I were to have one thing that I really, really did not like about this van, it would be how awkward it is to climb into because you're literally right over top of the tires. Your step to get in is up here, but there's nowhere to put your other legs. So you're just kind of like awkwardly hanging on to things to swing yourself into the vehicle, um, which is a bit weird and of course, you're constantly getting like dirt and stuff on yourself from the tires being right there. But other than that, it is an awesome van. So even though there's no engine under the hood, I will still show you what's under there just for those of you that are curious. So it has this tiny little hood, um, coolant reservoir, washer reservoir. They have HIDs on it that were put on it before they got it. Very typical JDM. They put HIDs on absolutely everything. Um, but yeah, there's really not a whole lot going on. Oh, of course the rad. There's really not a whole lot going on up here. A very flat fronted van. So this was more or less an introductory video. I just think it's a really cool van and I wanted to show it to you guys. Um, however, I could do a secondary video if there's enough interest on how they built the van. My parents have poured so much work and so many hours into this van, and I definitely did not do that justice in just casually talking about it. Um, they had a first iteration that they took out last year that they ended up completely redoing and scrapping it because there was a lot of trial and error in making this van. And if you're interested in seeing how that process unfolded, I know they took a lot of photos and they'd be really happy for me to share it. As always, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.